Dr. Chris Yeager here with ISO Baseball. You can reach us at isobaseball.com. Chris asked the question if I still use the cue of having the uh, the back knee uh, press the front heel down to the ground. Um, and the answer is yes. Um, not always, but what I want to ensure is is that this back leg goes. In other words, this back leg you know unloads as the as the front heel drops. I want to see significant you know abduction, pressing action um, before the heel drops. In other words, we're not trying to land balance like this. Okay, now this happens to be the uh, the kit I I use for the uh, the rotation, the poor example uh, on on how you create tor uh, rotation. Uh, video and this is uh, him about a month and a half later okay same kid 11 year old kid here um, and I just saw thought that since we saw this swing he you know his, his after swing would be a good one to look at uh, maybe not in the very best example but uh, but but a, but a very good one um, and and you know getting back to Chris's question on the cue of, of, of letting the back knee press the front side into the ground when I say that, I'm trying to emphasize just the abduction, you know, from the from the hip joint, the sideways pressing action. I'm not trying to get the knee to rotate or, or twist down. It really would be the you know the femur turning down. The knee can only you know flex and extend. So by this back knee pressing the foot into the ground, Chris, what I'm trying to get is I'm trying to make sure that that back leg goes you know before that heel drops. We don't want to be flat footed like this. You know the stride involves you know for those that have used a traditional stride effectively and again throughout history 99 percent of your major league hitters involved a stride that when the foot was up the weight was back and as the stride was completed we have created a shift in the center of pressure in other words we had scales under the feet at this point the reading on the front foot once the heel drops is much higher than it would be on the back foot this was him prior and again he's in more of a 50 50 position here now I have them sync to uh, when the entire foot is down, so you know we're getting a good idea of, of how much activity, you know, how much force we're getting out of the back leg, and hopefully you can see that that when the foot is entirely down on both of these swings, this leg has has produced force, and that's really as simple <laughs> as it is. Is you're trying to get this leg to produce force against the ground to put energy into the swing and you want that force directed just like any other activity in a straight line at your target okay now in this swing like I mentioned in much more detail in the in the rotation video in this swing the leg does nothing it does nothing uh, while the foots on the on the ground and again he was taught again a very rotational style there's no need to you know drive off the backside um, again the back leg doesn't contribute uh, to the swing or, or contributes very little and all of his rotation occurs due to the front leg so he gets no abduction there's no drive into the front side here we get good active abduction good active sideways pressing action you know through there okay and I mean just looking at that without even trying to get into the detail of it you can see how much more he advanced you know by simply adding uh, well that wasn't the only thing we did, but it was the, the, the first thing and it was the foundation of the changes we made was to make sure that that back leg did two things. That it loaded and unloaded sideways is what I tell the kids, but by, by abducting at the back hip and you want that leg to go before the heel drops. The same overall pattern that you use in throwing. When you throw, when the front foot lands, the back leg is already gone. Stand up do a couple of throws and feel how the back leg goes before the heel drops. But th that really is it, Chris, is, is, is I'm looking to make sure that that leg goes. And a lot of times mentally the kids can kind of, you know, feel where, where that knee is and we're looking for just a sideways press. We're not trying to turn it. You can see the, you know, the back toe is still straight ahead and we're not trying to spin it. We're looking for, you know, I'm looking for abduction. I'm looking to make sure that the leg goes before the heel drops. Okay, and that's the difference right there. Okay, um, you know, some of you may be interested. We'll, we'll look at a couple little things here. Some of you may be interested in this. While well, I'll go ahead, while I've got it up here, I'll go ahead and go through a quick little, you know, review of it. Um, you know, he gets into a real good position here. This is, you know, we really have really three parts to the swing. The way I, 
the way I go about it is you know simple load and then we have our attack phase which again involves the back leg pressing sideways and the elbow slotting to the ball so this is you know load attack and and you know in this in this phase what we want to see is that the back leg is pressed sideways we're still square on the front side the elbow has slotted the ball and we're still looking at a you know a stack barrel at that point okay um, and, and he did a real good job here now I'm not you know at this point we weren't exactly where I wanted to be with the with the elbow action I prefer you know more of a, a lifting and turning of the elbow there and we didn't didn't quite have that implemented at that point but you can see how different you know the two positions are here and I, I went ahead and synced them up to contact I think you guys got the idea at you know at heel plant that um, you know he had gone so I synced him up to contact and here you see you know we've got a much better position of the hands you know here he was really launching his hands from real high how flat the barrel was getting so again here we're swinging you know a, a barrel stacked above the hands we've got a light bat here and that's what we want we don't want this bat laid off here we can see how you know, you know the back arm was widening too much there um, and again here in this clip he may be a little wide with that elbow there um, I again probably tighten that up a little bit however this is one of the kids he's a little bit lanky and he's probably gonna have a, a position where the elbow is gonna be in front of the hands a little bit and that and that's fine as long as you know the the barrel doesn't doesn't lay over he doesn't uh, you know lose the barrel there the barrel stays nice and tall so you know this is a very good position and that that's really what we look for you know the title of this thread was you know how do we create tilt well we, we do use the leverage trainer quite a bit out front and uh, you know that creates some pelvic tilt you know in the front hip we ask them to set up with a little bit of tilt there and again that tilt to the pelvis is going to keep the body you know back here behind the baseball you know throughout the swing and that's going to help us not only does it create leverage you know the more leverage this leg has against the, the front hip we're going to get uh, more energy into the swing which will also increase that uh, you know hip rotation everybody's looking for um, but it's also going to stabilize the head you know we want that head stabilized you know behind the back side here in the old swing he had a stabilized head I mean that was easy to do because he had no drive so he just kinda you know everything just kinda stayed in the in the same spot but there was no drive but here we're gonna we're gonna drive the center of mass you know in the direction of the pitch but once the heel drops the head stabilizes and we hit behind that front side okay so you know just a real good move here again you know the back arm still needed some tweaking at this point um, but we get to a real nice position here uh, much better than before and we see that the tilt we've created here we get no tilt we get this straight up body position and that is due to the fact that he wouldn't have anything to balance tilt with because he doesn't drive off the back side if he tried to tilt he would just fall back here in the new move you know he drives off the back and that will allow him to have some dynamic balance where he's off the back side you can see the back foot's off the ground you can see the big difference there in terms of you know the leg driving driving the back hip into the ball and him staying leveraged behind it okay you know one other nitpick I have here is you know he lets his lead arm get away from his body a little much here hands are a little far forward you know I'd prefer to see the hands fire you know a little deeper not let that lead arm get away and then another nitpick is he releases top hand before the before it gets over the top I want to see most of my guys wind up being top hand release guys but I want to see contact I want to see that right arm finish and by finish I mean right after contact right hand gets over the top back arm extends and then and then we can release it so he releases before he finishes all right one other thing um, that we'll look at it again this is also related to you know are we using the back leg or not are we going to use the back leg as a force producer and that really is the simple debate uh, people don't want to use it they feel like it creates too many problems so they just eliminate the back leg and that, that that's the question so we have one swing here where we're not going to use the back leg uh, you know we're going to try to you know say this is rotational and we have you know a swing here where we're going to drive with the back leg well you know, we, we've I talked about uh, also in the hip rotation video we talked about you know that the axis of rotation in in good hitters is around the front hip okay and so what you'll see here 
is in the new move, he's driving the pelvis, you know, at the baseball. Okay, and so the front pelvis basically stays in the same position. Okay, and really the axis of rotation is about a point, and that's you know that's a you know a, a physics phrase, but you know it's rotating around you know through the front leg. Okay, so so the axis of rotation is through here. So hopefully you can see that um, that the back hip drives up and catches up with the front hip. So we, you know at, at heel plant we mark it, okay, and that that front that the uh, the front pelvic bone is not going to move backwards. The back side is catching up with the front. Now in the old swing, what happens? Well, because the back leg doesn't drive, there's no drive out of the back leg, okay. So he's got nothing there. So, you know, he gets weight on the front side, and all of the pelvic rotation is driven by the front leg driving against the ground and forcing the hip backwards, okay? There's a huge difference in, you know, the, the, the dynamics going on here and the force generated, and, and not only that, directing energy in a direction uh, of our target. So, you know... Here on the left, we have a kid trying to, you know, like like people try to say, you know, they're trying to rotate through their spine and and this sort of thing. So here we have a kid on the left that's just trying to stay in the same spot, stay balanced, you know, here and rotate through his spine, which he's doing. You know, he's got weight, you know, 50-50, and and he's rotating through his spine, driving his hip backwards. And here we have the same kid, you know, that's now dynamically balanced, you know, against the front side, but obviously is driving driving you know the back side in the ball and he's still stabilizing his head he, we're still getting a you know a stable axis of rotation but his axis of rotation is around the front hip and his is moving back his, his is through the spine you know he, he did exactly what he was taught you know he was a very good student okay but you know, th this is a very good move. This is a very good move at the baseball. I'm very pleased with it. Like I say, that you know, the back arm action could be a little better, um, but he does get into a very nice slotted position here. Very nice stacked barrel. He's keeping the bat pretty light. Look how different that is. And that that does relate itself also to uh, you know to the spinning action. I mean, they they all tend to come in with with this stacked spine look, and they tend to have a flatter barrel unless they've really got a, a big time fence drill swing where they've really been taught to push the hands forward and that's a whole another issue but uh, th this is a this is a very good position right there very good position what I teach you know back leg goes before the front heel drops front heel drops we stay tilted leveraged behind the front side we hit behind the front side you know we're trying to stay square and stable we want a strong stable front side to hit behind okay and so this is a this is a typical a, a, a typical progression, albeit a, a very good one, but still in time, it's 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 pretty typical of a guy coming from a you know a pure rotational system to a guy that that you know learns to to use his back leg. I can't say that enough. That that really is the debate: is are we going to actively you know use our back leg? Are we gonna are we gonna use our legs, um, you know, to maximize our potential?